Now that we have defined an electric field and figured out how to determine its strength, we want to have a way to visualize what that electric field would look like around specific charges. So what we do is we draw electric field lines. Now keep in mind when we talk about electric field lines, we are talking about an arbitrary picture of the electric field. The field is there, the lines just help us visualize its strength and direction. So in order to draw on electric field lines, there are a few rules to keep in mind. The first couple rules have to do with the direction of the vectors of the field line. First and foremost, the electric field lines point in the direction of the force that is acting from the electric field on a small positive test charge. When the small positive test charge is put into an electric field being produced by a positive charge, those field lines are going to act away from the positive charge. This means that the force is acting to push that small positive test charge away from the positive charge in the center. If we were to take that same small positive test charge and put it into field B, where there is a negative charge creating the electric field, that small positive test charge would feel a force pulling it towards the negative charge. So our electric field lines would be drawn showing the force moving towards the negative charge. When we look at the first diagram, what we see is electric field lines that are radiating out from the positive charge. If we trace those vectors back, we see that they all must start at that positive charge. Then where do they go? Well, there are a couple options. Those vectors can either be attracted to a negative charge somewhere, or they can just keep going on. So if we look at the vector radiating out directly to the east from that positive charge, we can see how that would very easily be able to go right directly into that negative charge right next to it. But if we look at the vector on the west, there's no negative charge over there to attract that field line. So that field line is just going to keep on going. So we can say then that the field lines end at a negative charge or end at infinity. In turn, if we look at that second diagram, we can see that the negative charge has the field lines moving all into that negative charge. So electric field lines will end at a negative charge. If there is no negative charge in sight, then they will end at infinity. So we can say that electric field lines start at a positive charge or they start at infinity within our diagram. We can also say that they end at a negative charge or end at infinity within our diagram. It just depends on whether or not there is another charge present in our picture. Now also within a given problem, the number of field lines needs to be proportional to the amount of charge. This does not have to be consistent from problem to problem, just a scale to be representative of the given situation. So for example, in diagram B, there are eight lines. If we say this represents 32 nanocoulombs, then diagram C would represent 64 nanocoulombs because it has twice as many field lines. The last rule of drawing electric field lines is that the lines cannot cross. This is because the field lines represent the direction of the field. If the lines cross, then that would mean that the field is acting in two different directions. So say we have two positive charges near each other. The magnitude of the charges are the same, so the same number of field lines are drawn from each point. Both are positive charges, so the electric field points in the direction away from the charge. It gets interesting in the area where the field lines should run into each other. Remember that light charges repel because the fields from each charge exert opposing forces on any charge placed in between them. So since these are like charges, at some point in space, those charges are going to repel each other. And that happens typically right here in the center. So the forces turn and do not radiate straight out from those charges. Now you can, of course, calculate the electric field at any given point and smooth out your field lines to give you a more accurate representation. In this case, we have two negative charges. The field that is produced is very similar to the field with the two positive charges, with the only difference being that the field lines are moving into the charges. Since the charges are equal in magnitude, we have the same number of lines radiating out. And since it is a negative charge, we have the field moving into the negative. Again, we have a weaker field in the middle where the like forces are repelling each other. But what happens when there are two opposite charges? The field moves out of the positive charge and are pulled in by the negative charge. Instead of having a weak electrical field in between the charges, the electric field becomes stronger because the fields from each charge is moving in the same direction. Essentially, what you are doing here is adding forces in the same direction, so those field strengths add together.